people just adored him. Well, he was so jolly and so nice and so generous. I think that was one of the one of the one of the great things about him. I met Jim Beard when our first book came out. That was in 1961. And our editor at Knopf, Judith Jones, said, well, now, whom would you like to meet? Because my colleague Simka, Simone Beck, was with me and, and my husband, Paul. And we'd been in the diplomatic service. We'd been out of the country for years, so I didn't know anybody. But I did know the name of Jim Beard, and I said, I'd like to meet Beard. And so Judith arranged it, and we came down on the subway. This was way back in 1961. And we entered, and there must have been Clay, who opened the door for us, and here was this great big Jim, and his hands were covered with egg white, and he greeted us like that. And he was demonstrating how to fold a souffle, the egg whites into a souffle with their hands. And he was, he was just wonderful to us. He said, oh, and he, after he'd gotten the egg white off of his hands, he said, this great book that they have just done and so forth. And he was just so welcoming and so nice and so helpful. And he introduced us to everybody. He was just so nice to us. And we became firm friends from them on. Simka came and taught classes here, and so did I. And then. We had a little housey down in in the south of France, and Jim used to come there and use it, and that was... And then we, we just became very close, happy friends. He certainly influenced me, because I had I'd been living in France, and at that time in France, everything was very close to the chest. Nobody would give out any information about anything. When he was so open, he had such a general love of food that I think he encouraged everybody. His, I think his newspaper articles were very influential. When you read Beard, you felt that he was talking because he wrote just the way he talked. He was particularly good at, at public demonstrations because he really was an actor. I remember I saw him down in the South Shore of Boston in a great big t tent where they had those kind of, they had plays that went on in the, Tent and this he did a big cooking demonstration there, and he was just great fun as a demonstrator. He was not not as good on television, you know. Some people freeze up, mm -hmm. which he kind of did, but as a performer, a live performer, he was just without peer, I think. He was never a very good financial manager at all, and he really had, had made no provision for what was going to happen with his house or his affairs. And it was stated that uh, everything of his was going to go up for auction and the house would disappear. And I happened to be at a meeting of the IACP, the International Association of Culinary Professionals, and I was giving a speech and I just suddenly said, we can't let the James Beard house go, that we should really start a foundation, we should, we should save it so that we can have some kind of a place for everybody who's in the culinary business. And that's, I just made that one remark, and everyone thought that that was a wonderful idea because Jim was, he, he represented the food community for most of everyone. And then it was really thanks to Peter Kump that just from those few remarks, Peter Kump took the ball and he ran with it, and that's why we have the James Beard Foundation today. James Beard was important in his day and is now even more so because he's of a focal point of, of gastronomy and of the people in the profession. I think just the fact that he was in it has made the culinary professional respectable one, and one that's being now taken more and more seriously by the, by the public at large. And I think just the fact of having the foundation keeps his name and his image alive. And I, I think it's vastly important and that all of us who are in the culinary field should support the foundation 
particularly because now you're doing so much on research and I think so much on encouraging young people to go into the business and also showcasing young chefs from all over the country, is New York certainly is, is the focal point, I think, for, well, it's still the Big Apple, and I think so many chefs feel that if they have come here at the Beard Foundation and given a dinner and gotten recognition, that it means a great deal to them. I think the James Beard Foundation is tremendously important for everybody who's taking the culinary arts as a serious art form, which I think most of us who are in the business do. And I think it's furthering that.